Hi, welcome back to 17 square meters garden. I hope that you had a great start to the spring season. Today is a very beautiful and sunny day. I mean sunny on the other side of the building, but even here in full shade, it's still very nice and pleasant. So I thought that it's gonna be a good opportunity to give you guys a tour of the balcony garden in March, to give you some updates on spring bulbs and on everything else as well. In the end of February, I left for holidays for three weeks. So I kind of missed on those first uh, flowers, on those first blooming uh, spring bulbs. When I arrived I tried to take some photos and some clips of those flowers so that I can show you how they look when they are at their prime. So as we go I will include some of those clips so that you can see those plants uh, when they are at their best. So let's go, let's start this tour in this corner for a change because last time we started with the back of the balcony so now let's start with this corner and um, I will tell you the things as we go. This corner always looks so empty in winter that I have envy to just add a bunch of plants in here but I forget that in spring everything is just waking up and the space is filling in uh, we have some Carex grass, Carex Evergold that is just blooming Hukura has new leaves on it beautiful little Tiarella which is a full shade plant so if you are searching for a full shade plant Tiarella is amazing um, it has evergreen leaves and it just keeps blooming year round it creates nice mound of beautiful little white blooms attracts pollinators Hellebore that um, I keep I tend to keep my hellebore blooms on them look at these blooms they look so funny there's full of aphids on them and I'm not sure if it's aphids who ate the foliage and the, the petals as you can see there's a lot of damage maybe it is slugs maybe aphids I don't know but I'll be cutting it back so that's um, that's okay some ornamental grass Pestuca glauca and I'm not sure what my Buddha statue is doing in the spot but um, let's just put it back where it belongs okay right there my gorgeous Japanese maple acer orange dream is just leafing out and it's looking gorgeous do you remember in my last february tour i showed you that my euronymous had euronymous scale and uh, i gave it as an example i showed you as an example that you don't have to use pesticides and as you can see look euronymous without any treatment with euronymous scale is looking absolutely gorgeous right now so let it be a good example that Sometimes you don't have to do much, you don't have to do anything, and your plants will be perfectly fine. We have hellebore, another hellebore, and here also I kept the blooms because they look so gorgeous and they have such a unique look when they are setting seed, but I'm going to cut them back uh, pretty soon now. And the rest is just some bunch of perennials that are waking up. So moving on, there is a flower bed with more warm tones. I have some beautiful china doxa, finally learned how to pronounce it correctly, and some tulips that are just now starting to open, uh, and there's a bunch of other things that are just waking up, more tulips, more fox gloves. So they are just starting to fade, I mean they look pretty sad now, but they are the gorgeous daffodil variety. I will show you how they look when they are in their prime, but if you are a fan of daffodils like I am, these guys are definitely ones to plant because they are just so, so stunning. And here is the other Japanese maple, it's a red garnet and it has black aphids on it. Uh, and it is very recent, I haven't noticed them before. I just put it in the middle of the balcony, I washed it, I made sure to remove as many aphids as I possibly could because they were literally everywhere. And look at this, she's just now eating aphids of my Japanese maple. So if now I were to spray it with some pesticides for aphids, this little girl, she's gone. Because pesticides are non-selective, so they kill both beneficial creatures and your pest. So instead of spraying pesticides, encourage ladybugs into your garden. Okay, moving forward, the fun starts because there is more spring bulbs in here. There is a hyacinth mix and I don't know what varieties are in here because it was a mix. I know that these guys, um, they are called Delft Blue and the smell is a little bit overwhelming. They smell so intense that I can smell them from the other corner of the balcony. Uh, here, of course, I mean in these pots there are 
total of 450 crocus and they've been blooming since the since the end of February so almost a month now so here in this place I planted mascari as you can see here is mascari and here I planted yellow hyacinths and I ended up with peachy hyacinths that happens often with bulbs you plant something and you get something else here in this pot that's something else because I have no recollection of planting so many bulbs in this one pot I remember that I kept the gorgeous blue star hyacinth so as long as the delft blue are a little bit too overwhelming in smell like if you put them inside it gets really really like smelly like i mean that's a beautiful smell but it's a little bit too much the delft blue hyacinths are a little bit too much but these guys the blue star they smell like lilac and it's really really pleasant smell they are not overwhelming and they bloom gorgeously i also remember planting a drumstick allium on top of them because drumstick alliums they bloom a little bit later in summer so i knew that i can keep the spot as it is so i keep the hyacinths in the pot and then i know that once the hyacinths are done uh, sometime after the drumstick alliums will pick up and start to bloom but I have no idea what these guys are, like, they look sort of like tulips or even like alliums. Here's the most exciting part, my little galvanized container area. I planted a bunch of daffodils in here and some of them are already blooming. Here we have absolutely gorgeous Ice King daffodils. I'm a huge fan of daffodils, I grow 13 varieties on my balcony and these are definitely one of my favorites. They start off as this uh, more yellow centered flowers and they age to this gorgeous creamy white. I have tete a tete daffodils uh, which in French means head to head and they really grow head to head as you can see and they are classics and everyone has them and I grow them for the first time this year and also new ones that also a lot of people grow them but I uh, it's the first time that I grow them. It's Rip Van Winkle. They are more of um, like funny like they they wouldn't you wouldn't say that they are daffodils by the look of their heads but they are really really fun i have some other ones who will come later uh i don't even remember what these are i would need to look up oh i can see there is a can can girl the top ones are can can girl and these guys i don't remember first mascara start to bloom in this big container i had early blooming daffodils so we had ice follies and a ring belts, early sensation. A lot of people ask recently what to do with spring bulbs, what do I do with spring bulbs when they are done blooming and I have a video on that that I recorded last year so I'll link it in the description so that you can watch it uh, if you want to learn more about what to do with spring bulbs. Me personally I treat some as seasonal flowers so I don't keep them from year to year but there's a lot that I do keep from year to year and that's why this year I planted, I mean last fall I planted 600 bulbs and I intend on keeping most of them. Okay, we are arriving at the end of the balcony and here there's just a little mess at the moment. It's a part of the balcony that I never really show uh, because I keep just um, some accessories and some plants that are out of season, like for example some um, chrysanthemums. I have one pot with spring bulbs that I should put uh, with the other ones to replace maybe the replete that are done blooming. These guys are called pink charm daffodils and it's also the first time that I grow them. They are funny because they grow, there's several of them that come from one bloom stock. They are like a little bit like tete a tete. They grow head to head. Uh, and there's also some tulips planted with them. And my hydrangeas looking absolutely gorgeous. They already have buds. I'm very excited. I love hydrangeas. Both of these are macrophyllas. I'm still yet to plant my fruit bushes and I will make video really really soon. In this big pot I'm gonna grow some edibles, I'm gonna plant lettuce and some leafy greens and radishes really soon. I hope that you enjoyed today's tour, seeing some updates and some beautiful spring flowers. Um, so spring is a really busy time, we are all out gardening, we are excited to grow new plants and to start the season um, and I do receive a lot more requests as to how to grow different plants and how to do certain garden tasks so I came up with the idea that instead of posting one video a week I will post two videos a week uh, some specific videos on how to uh, how to grow certain plants or so how to plant certain plants and uh, stuff like that so that I can address some of, the, some of those questions, some of those requests through those videos to help you guys grow plants and uh, to help you take better care of your plants. Now 
additionally to this Saturday morning video, I will also have a video coming on either Wednesday or Thursday evening. Uh, and I hope that I can keep up with these two videos per week schedule because uh, recording and posting a video takes an enormous amount of time. So I'll try my best to have an additional video ready for Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy these videos as well and that they will give you some answers and help you take better care of your plants. So thank you for today and I will see you again in my next video which will be on Wednesday evening. Have a good day!